Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And Cure v version 4, a major upgrade, at least in terms of number, just recently shipped. It's an upgrade from Cure version 3.6. And I've compared them side to side. Uh, I've completed a couple prints, different nozzle sizes, different applications. And I'd like to share with you what I've learned. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. To start with, I am a big fan of reading release notes. Now, these are actually the release notes for Cura going back to 2016, version 2.3. The release notes for this particular version of Cura are about three pages long, and they start by highlighting the changes to the user interface. So let's take a look at some of my notes, then we'll look at the actual software side by side. To begin with, Cura is an open source software product supported by the folks at Ultimaker. Um, it ships and is configured in particular for the Ultimaker machines. However, it has generic support because it is open source provided by the community for many, many other machines. It also has the ability to create your own machine definitions and profiles, so you really can use it with any machine um, that uses an appropriate back end that supports a G-code uh, printing methodology. In this particular release, there were actually over 2,400 commits to GitHub. GitHub is the location, the repository that is used to store Cura and many other open source projects. And a commit is not necessarily a change. A commit is an update to at least, let's say, a line of code that's part of a bigger change. So that doesn't imply there are 2,400 changes, but there was a lot of work done in about the last year since version 3.6. Cura is really just a user front end, a graphical user interface for the Cura engine, which is the back end. Cura is written in Python. The Cura engine is written in C, C++. And the Cura engine was only modestly updated. There were about 300 commits. Um, but many of those commits were minor bug fixes along the path. So in general, it seems to me so far that you should see similar slicer performance, meaning if a model when sliced under Cure 3.6 worked, it is likely to work equally well under Cure 4. Now, I did have one problem with Cure version 3.6. On my Monoprice Select MP10, when I had acceleration and jerk control enabled, the calibration cat would always fa fail at the same level, layer. Now, I've redone that rerun it under version 4, and this cat uh, printed very well. Now, the variables were not all identical because this is a one millimeter nozzle. My earlier failures were a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but in general, it does appear once again, there were some bug fixes, maybe quite a few along the way, but primarily this release focuses on user interface. In the marketplace area, there is now there are now user reviews for additional plugins and extensions for Cura. Very nice. They've enhanced networking, remote printing, and backup for their own Ultimaker uh, 3D printers and their Ultimaker customers. It doesn't appear that's going to impact the rest of the community very much. The most significant slicer update appears to be the addition of a minimum support area option. So if we look at this uh, particular low poly cat, this was also printed on a one millimeter nozzle on the Monoprice MP10. So Cura uh, recommended supports under the chin here, which I put in, but it also added supports right in this little corner here. The supports under the chin were very easy to remove. 
The supports in this small area here were very, very difficult to remove, and in essence, I've probably damaged the model slightly uh, because this particular uh, gold filament CC3 China Gold is a beautiful filament that comes out very shiny and where I've hacked away at the supports it's not quite as shiny any longer. So in this new version of Cura you've always had the ability in Cura to block supports in a particular area. You also have the ability to say if the support's going to be smaller than a particular size don't put it in anyways. That might have been helpful in this print. There are a number of performance in improvements in the slicer, some profile updates, and just general bug fixes. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the new version of Cura and compare the UI to the old version. In order to do this, we first need to be able to see all of the parameters. So both under the new version and the old version, under the hamburger menu, you need to select show all settings to be able to see all parameters. Now if we look at them for, side by side, the first thing you'll see is they've introduced a new concept in the new version in Cura version 4 and that's on the left hand side and that is there are now three stages. Things you do when you're preparing, when you're previewing, and you're monitoring. All three of these stages were in the old version. The way you access them was a bit different. It's a bit simpler in this new version. In the new version, as you'll see, uh, the general layout of the screen is completely open. There's nothing on the screen. Whereas in version 3.6, you had all of your parameters on the right-hand side. You need to click on either the any of the items on the top right, uh, the pen or any of the items listed there, in order to drop down the setting options. The setting options in general look very, very similar to the old version. There are three dots on the bottom of the setting options you can use to drag the space it's using up or down. There is still a recommended mode versus a custom mode. Um, a little cleanup on the UI appears to have been done in the recommended mode. Now overall, when you load a model, it looks very similar. Um, one area where I saw some incremental improvement is the little staircase on the left-hand side is used to select areas where you want to block Cura from putting supports. It appears that the granularity and control is much better than it was before. Basically, you click on the staircase, then you click on one of the red areas where Cura is showing you it will be adding supports, um, and then it highlights what area it's going to block. That seems to work better under version 4 than it did under version 3. Under version 4, in order to see the details of where your time is going to go in the print, you click on the little eye on the right-hand side versus mousing over the time that you did in version 3. The view when you've sliced a model, the individual layer view, is very, very similar, but you have more space. You have more geography to work with because the items on the right-hand side are no longer there. Now, the one area that I mentioned earlier in the video that seems to be a significant change is the concept of minimum support area. Uh, this allows you, once again, to define that if the support's going to be cover smaller than a particular size area, uh, don't include it. I haven't tried this myself, but the concept is very, very interesting. In the marketplace, they've now added user ratings to each of the individual uh, plugins that are available. Very nice addition. The monitor screen looks very, very similar. Once again, graphically, it's been cleaned up a bit. Uh, it seems to work very similar. I print through Octoprint, and just as in Cura 3.6, in Cura 4, even when you're printing through Octoprint, you get full support for the monitor capability. Now that really brings us to one other thing that's interesting, is my old plugins did not load. 
When I updated to Cura 4, everything else loaded in my machine models, my profiles, my old plugins did not load. I had to go to the marketplace and reselect them to get them to load. Okay, in conclusion, I would recommend everyone try Cure version 4. You can run version 4 and th version 3.6 side by side. I'm doing that on my Mac. That's how I was able to put together this comparison. Um, it is cleaner. The user interface will be simpler for new users, in particular when they run it in recommended mode. I like the minimum support area concept a lot. Um, and at least in my case, one bug that I um, ran into in Cure related to a particular printer and acceleration and jerk control seems to have gone away in this new version. Okay, I hope in this short video you learned something. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If it didn't, if I did something that really didn't work for you, let me know in the comments. I'm interested in your comments. I'm interested in everyone participating in this video forum environment on YouTube where comments create an interaction between the content provider and the viewers. Thanks so much. Please subscribe. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together. <music>